Now in this chapter, we speak about the stranger amongst the ballroom dances. Why the stranger? Because basically, it's not a ballroom dance. The tango. The tango is a Latin American dance, and years ago, actually used to be danced in Latin American competitions. Now the tango, as a Latin American dance, is based on rhythm. It's not based mainly on melody, like the four other dances. So we don't have swing, we don't have body flight, we don't have a visual rise and fall. Steps are being placed step by step individually. The tango is based on the tango walk. Also our position towards each other is slightly different. We have a more compact position which makes it possible for us to walk and stop as basically the character and movement of the tango is the ability to move and stop, move and stand still. So we have a certain foot position that we try to create in the beginning in our setup for the tango. Let's have a look at the feet of William and Alessandra, the way they are standing together in their tango hold. Now the right feet are in front of each other and the so-called closed foot is not actually really closed because the right foot is slightly back. Thank you. So, with the right foot slightly back, it is a habit that most of the couples start by going backwards into the position, which is okay when you're good enough to hold your posture still forward towards your partner. Now, Bill Irvin used to take a tango hold in a complete different way. He didn't let the girl come to him. He took his body up to the girl. Can I please ask you? So what he did is what we try now. He went on the left foot and went forward and closed towards the lady. And I do that again. So he went forward actually cuddled a little bit with his body and closed his leg towards the lady and has a compact position to be able to dance the tango. Thank you. Now we have another look at William and Alessandra's hold. If they pick up the hold, you will find out because of the compactness of the hold, the contact points are longer. They will have contact in the legs as well, which is not the case in the swing dances. Also you will see can you turn a little bit this way so we see it from all angles that the right arm is further around the lady and a little bit more down. And another little turn and you will feel that the left hand of Alessandra is under his right arm. In this case the arm length is perfect so his elbow fits actually into this angle of her left arm. That doesn't happen always, it is actually a matter of the arm length of the two partners. Thank you. Now, the tango walk. The tango walk is the base for all steps in tango. So if you understand how to walk properly in tango, you're on a good route for a successful dance. To be able to do a correct walk in a swing dance, as we spoke about, we start in a closed position as we finish in a closed position. That is not the case in the tango. In the tango, we go from the starting position towards the walk, and the walk is finished when my body weight is around about 80% on the front part and is still having 20% pressure on the back foot. Only when I intend to continue my movement, I release the back toe and place the second walk. So we're always caught before we are completely on our front foot. Another thing we have to think about and reconsider is that the tango is basically choreographed on a curve to the left. So if we would be thinking of doing tango walks, we are not curving our body left. That would mean we turn away from the lady, which wouldn't help. We are going normal forward walks, but on a circle. 
So if we do that, we're walking forward on a circle. I don't have to look down to realize that I'm in CBMP because it happens. If I continue on that circle, I will finish with a shoulder lead. Now that is very, very typical. And another aspect we need is the shaping of the feet, and we will watch these in two consecutive walks. A shaping of the foot in tango means we have both feet flat on the floor when we start. Now we go from the right leg, and the left sole of the foot peels off the floor before the shin bone and the foot is placed. We'll do that again. And slow. And slow and slow. Through this shaping we create a very characteristic movement which we need in a lot of the variations. The lady backward of course is not using her toe like we did in the swing dances, she's using the ball of the foot to be able to control the weight in that position. Now let's have a look at Tango Walks from William and Alessandra. On a circle, beautifully done. Now, as the tango is in two-quarter timing, we can precise the moment when the back foot is released to be placed for the next walk. If we call one, and, two, and, it will be the D of the and where the back foot is released. One, and, two, and, one, and, two, and. Can we see that one more time? So we have a better understanding how it looks as a couple. One and two and one and two and one and two and. Thank you. One of the most important positions, of course, in the tango is the promenade position. Because this is basically an entry or an exit to most of the variations we have. Now, how does a man lead the lady to open to promenade? Well, basically, he turns himself. He uses his right foot and his right thigh to, for a slight turn to the left, and that is already enough to lead the lady. Now let's see how that looks within a couple. Basic position. Now the right leg and right foot has a slight turn to the left. And we do have the promenade position. There's no opening of the bodies yet, because it's not necessary. Okay, thank you very much. One of the ugliest things in tango are positions where the knees are turned away from each other. That is called the Texas tango. It looks absolutely ugly. In all promenade positions, the knees are veered in. As an exercise, Bill used to do this. Now watch as we do this trick. He used to have a balloon and placed it between the knees when he did a promenade position. That would be the perfect position as the knees are holding the balloon without squashing the balloon. That is a perfect connection from one leg to the next. Now that would be absolutely perfect. Unfortunately, he couldn't be able to continue dancing with it without bursting it. Thank you very much. The next step we're going to discuss is the progressive link, a step which has nearly disappeared because you can't make ground with it, and it's very difficult, actually, because of the timing. The progressive link is a half-hearted walk with a strong turn to the right. So it is a half-hearted walk, and while I transfer my weight to my left foot, I have a strong turn to the right, which brings me to promenade position. I have to bring all the energy in that foot. I get the energy out of the foot and I stand still. So I, do, I take it in, I take it out, and I stand still. Another thing he used to say, he compared it to the Morse code language. In the Morse code language we have a short action which is a dot, and the, and the long sound is a dash. So he liked to have it as a dash dot dash dot. Let's have a look at the progressive link. Take it in, take it out, stand still. Dash dot. 
Very good. And maybe one more. And the lady is in a beautiful promenade position. And what? Thank you very much. Another step out of the museum nearly disappeared from the scene is the closed promenade. Now the closed promenade is a very difficult step. We come from a promenade position. From the promenade position I prepare from my right leg. Also again my left foot peels off the floor. So this first step is called preparation. I prepare. I will strike the lower part of my leg and foot through in one action. Strike. I will flick the shin bone of my left leg into position on the inside edge of the foot because my weight is still not completely transferred. Quick, that's a flick. And I close my right side to my left side. So in all, I have, together with the sounds, I have prepare, strike, flick, close. Now the lady, of course, is not swiveling her feet. She places the foot on the inside edge of the ball of the foot before she transfers the weight. Let's have a look at a closed promenade. And prepare, strike, flick, close. That was wonderful. Maybe we can see two walks, a progressive link, and a closed promenade together. And walk, walk, prepare, strike, flick, close. Now you can see the accents, which is a mixture of accented and sharp or smooth, passionate and easy. That is the differences we do have in the tango. We have another very interesting phenomenon. There is only in the tango are steps where the lady has a footwork which reads whole foot. Very unusual. Now whole foot means that this step has absolutely no progression at all. And from there the next step will be newly placed. Now the steps are the second step of a four step, or a five step, and the second step of an open reverse turn. So we would have for the lady, it is one at that is a whole foot and before she steps outside. The same goes for an open reverse turn. Now let's have a look at that when William and Alessandra dance it. First of all, probably the fourth step, and it's the second step of the lady. Very good. And once the reverse open turn where well, we have the same phenomenon with the footwork of the lady on step two. Yep, and oh, quick, quick, slow. Thank you. Now, I think it would be a good idea if William and Alessandra dance a piece of the basic elements we just talked about to music. So we watch a little bit of their basic tango. And one last feature I have definitely to mention. Now, Bill was very keen on the fact that the most characteristic feature of the tango is monumental stillness. As I said in the intro to the dance, the difference between moving and standing totally still. You arrive positions where you have to freeze the position, at least for a millisecond. You do a link and you freeze before you continue. You're not wobbling and moving and doing strange things. You are completely frozen in position. Now this monumental stillness is the main feature of the dance. Even when you do complicated steps, you have to find your spots where you freeze for a millisecond before continuing. Now that feature today, unfortunately, is nearly gone over the Jordan because running is everything that counts. Unfortunately, in Argentina, in tango, nobody runs. So, 
we have to take care about preserving the tradition of the dance, thinking about moving and standing still. That, of course, is only possible if we create speed in the right way. To create speed, we build up an inner tension of our body which we release, like blowing up a balloon and bursting it just through a pin. Pow! So that's what we do. We, inside, we build up energy, we release energy, and we create speed. So by the time we freeze our positions, we are relaxed in our muscles and not tight. That is very important. You always have to remember one thing which Bill has had to say to all his pupils. To be relaxed in your muscles is the main foundation for being able to dance that dance at the correct speed changes. He used to say, you can crack a whip, but you cannot break steel. I would ask William and Alessandra now to dance a little piece choreography in tango, and you will see the differences of speeds, the differences of passionate and soft, and definitely you will see monumental stillness. Thank you.